Good morning, friends. Greetings. And welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your phone calls on the bright side. Our number today and every day is 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard or read in the newspaper or seen in the lay press, we can help you understand how to use nutrition and nutritional supplementation and skin care as well. If you've got questions about skin care products or skin care conditions or skin conditions or uh, skin care ingredients, we can help you. 844-236-6010. Likewise, if you have a success story or you just want to contribute to our conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls in our next segment, towards the end of our next segment, 844-236-6010. Of course, if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised in the program, or if you want to join the Brightside Ben team and join me in my mission to educate the world about how effective and how important a good nutritional supplement program can be, for a one-time $25 fee, you can start yourself a longevity business and help spread the word about how important good nutrition and good nutritional supplementation is. Call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. You can also head over to my website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and now criticalhealthnews.com, and sign up right off the website or purchase any of the products right off the website, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, and brightside, brightsideben.com. Okay. Welcome back to The Bright Side, continuing on with our theme of skin cell exercise, exercising your skin or exercising skin cells. In the same way muscles get bigger, when they're exercised or destabilized, we said exercise is destabilization, same way muscles get bigger when they're destabilized, when they're stressed, when they're exercised, the same way the brain gets more complex when it is repeatedly challenged with new ways of thinking, new ideas, puzzles and riddles, new languages. Anything that challenges the brain will make a, uh, create a brain that's more complex, has more neurology, has healthier neurology, more, ner more blood cells, more nourishment. In the same way that you can build your brain and build your body and build your muscles by using stress and by using exercise, likewise the skin will become stronger and more robust and have less wrinkles and less fine lines and more moisture factors and more hydration when it is exercised, when it is stressed when it is challenged and understanding how to use exercise for the skin, how to use skin exercise is a key element to keeping your skin young and healthy and beautiful all the days of your lives. So if we can figure out how to destabilize the skin, how to stress the skin, we will in essence be exercising and the results we'll get, the results that we, are, we will get will be hypertrophy, increase in growth. The skin's version of bigger, stronger muscles or a more complex and skillful brain. So to make the specific organ called the skin healthier and more attractive, we want to do the same thing we do to the body as a whole to make it healthier and more attractive. We, can, uh, we want to apply this whole idea of breakdown and build up, breakdown leading to build up, catabolism leading to anabolism, leading to catabolism, this cycle of breakdown, build up, breakdown, build up, breakdown, build up. We want to apply it to the skin to improve the health 
of the skin cells. That's what's meant by exercising the skin cells as opposed to exercising skin muscles. Now, it can be very helpful to exercise the skin muscles. And if you Google uh, skin exercise on YouTube, you'll probably see uh, skin yoga or skin exercise using, using contraction and relaxation strategies on the musculature of the skin. That's also very helpful for keeping the skin healthy. But I'm talking here about skin cell exercise, not skin muscle exercise. Probably the most important way to exercise the skin cells and to upregulate or increase the production of all the good stuff, all the moisture factors and collagen and elastin and high aluronic acid, which we're going to be talking about a lot here in the next few days. Probably the most important way to stimulate or turn on the production of these things is exfoliation. Now, most people, women at least, have heard of exfoliation. It basically means to remove skin cells. Ex meaning remove, folia is the Latin term for leaves back in the day, back in the, when they were coming up with these words, foliage and leaves were similar. At least they thought the skin cells or the, the stuff on top of the skin rep, uh, resembled leaves. Exfoliation means to remove leaves. Exfoliare is the Latin term to remove leaves. And it's a reminder that the process of removing skin cells is a lot like pruning your leaves back on a tree or on a bush. On a, on a bush. The same notion of pruning your leaves back on a tree or a bush or a plant the same notion of the pruning, the pruning effect having a positive or upregulating benefit for your plants, the same notion applies to your skin and the rest of the body, even though it's somewhat counterintuitive. In the same way that removing or cutting the foliage on a plant doesn't make the plant less healthy, but makes it more healthy in the same way by removing the skin cells, by removing or exfoliating the cells off of the surface of the skin, you're going to get bigger, better, stronger, more vital, healthier, more attractive skin. Not just in the short term. In the short term, you'll get a nice smooth appearance to the skin after you exfoliate it. But in the long term, you'll have less wrinkles. You'll have more moisture factors and overall healthier skin. And there's lots of ways to do this exfoliation, and we should be doing it on a regular basis if we really care about the health of our skin. And oh, by the way, we said yesterday, I think we said yesterday in this program, on some radio show I did, I don't remember which one it was, uh, we said that the skin is a route of excretion for toxins. Toxins come out of the body through the skin. They come out of the body through the hair. They come out of the body through the nails, nail fungus is uh, one of the ways that the body excretes fungus. If you want to have a, uh, if you want to know what kind of toxicity is going on in your body, you can have a hair analysis done because toxins are eliminated in the hair. Well, likewise, the same thing happens in the skin. Toxins are eliminated through the skin, as through the nails, and as through the hair. So exfoliation strategies are not only important for upregulating, for increasing the production of fibers and all the good stuff in the skin, but it's also a detox strategy. You can also improve the detoxification of the body. You can improve kidney function. The skin, in fact, has been called the third kidney because toxins are excreted through the skin. If you're dealing with hyperhidresis or excessive sweating, chances are pretty good your body is trying to eliminate toxins. The skin is a route of excretion for toxicity in the body and exfoliation. Not only has anti-aging properties, not only has skin health properties, but also has internal detoxification benefits. And there's lots of ways to exfoliate. The most obvious is simply using a loofah pad or a sponge or a washcloth in the shower to speed up the sloughing of dead surface cells. Once the cells flop off, once they are exfoliated or removed off the skin surface, biochemical signals are relayed to the lower levels of the skin where new cells are birthed. And these new cells then migrate upward, creating an improved thickness to the skin surface, the epidermis. Also, because as these cells are rising upward, as they're going to the top of the, top of the skin, they're releasing moisture factors. The skin is not only going to be thicker and more robust and more resilient and provide a, a, a more effective barrier, but your skin's also going to be more hydrated and more moisturized. How cool is that? Exfoliation in the long run, as long as you're healthy, as long as you've got the right nutrients inside your body, inside your blood, exfoliation will actually make your skin moister and more hydrated via this uh, increased or improved release of moisture factors as skin cells are rising to the top. So your skin will be thicker, your skin will be a, more, a healthier protective barrier, and your skin will also become more hydrated and moisturized. Not fake moisturized, the way skincare products moisturize the skin with wax and oil, but really moisturized with more hydration or moisturizing factors in the skin. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. We 
are back on the Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here. Our number is 844-236-6010. we got lines open for you, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, or if you want to get off your meds, help a loved one, workmate, family member, friend, get off their medication, and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you if you want to purchase any of the longevity products or you have questions about any of the longevity products, you can also call 844-236-6010 and we can help you understand the products, the ingredients, how to use the products for health and longevity. If you want to purchase the products, you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 or you can order products directly off the web at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And if you want to purchase any of my Truth Treatment products, Retinol Gel, Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Serum, or Truth Balm, all loaded with vitamin C. And uh, no preservatives, no fragrances, no waxes, no oils, only stuff you need. Everything you pay for in the Truth Treatment products is functional and active on your skin. I didn't put anything in those, in, any uh, pro, uh, ingredients in those products that aren't going to have a benefit for you and your skin. And in my opinion, that's how skin care should be. If you're interested in checking out my Truth Treatment products, head to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, let's see. We're talking exfoliation, exfoliare, removing leaves, removing skin cells off the surface of the skin. As you remove skin cells off the surface using a washcloth or a loofah pad, or, or, or you can also use retinol for that matter. We'll talk about that here in a sec. Uh, as you remove surface scale, skin cells off the surface, you get more moisture factors, you get more collagen, you get more elastin, all by scrubbing away the surface of the skin. Now, you don't want to over scrub. You just want the dead cells on the surface to flop off. You don't want any of the good cells coming off, so you don't want to over scrub and you don't want to over exfoliate. But as you exfoliate, you're going to have more fibers, you're going to have more moisture factors, you're going to have healthier, better skin. And not moisturize in the fake skincare product kind of way with wax and with oil, but truly moisturize in the biological way via upregulation, via an increased production of natural moisturizing sponges and lipids or oils, lipids being the fancy way of saying oils, like cholesterol. Surprise? Well, guess what? Cholesterol in the skin is one of the ways the skin moisturizes itself. One of the side effects of statin drugs is drier skin. That's because you don't have the cholesterol production, uh, the cholesterol production in skin cells. Statin drugs don't just stop cholesterol production in the liver; they stop them in skin cells. Did you know your skin cells make, uh, produce cholesterol as part of their moisturization process? Statin drugs will, just like they poison cholesterol-making manufacturing, cholesterol-making machinery in the liver, will do the same thing in the skin. You'll end up with drier skin. There's really no good use for statin drugs. I don't understand how any physician who's sworn to do no harm can prescribe a drug that will poison the production of arguably the most vital element in the body, cholesterol. But in the skin, cholesterol is involved with moisturization. Cholesterol is involved in healing. I put cholesterol in my omega-6 healing cream and also in my truth serum for that very reason, because cholesterol accelerates the production of, or accelerates the healing of the skin and also stimulates moisturization. Squalane is another cholesterol-derived moisture factor. Squalane or squalene, some of you guys may have heard of that, usually found in sharks or shark liver, but you can also get squalane from olives. The newer squalane products, squalane-containing skincare products, we use olive squalane. Squalane or squalene not only is important for helping uh, helping uh, uh, moisturize the skin, but you can use squalane and squalene internally to help stabilize your blood fats. Squalane or squalene on the top of the skin is an absolutely amazing skin moisturizer, non-toxic. It is the skin's natural oil, and it's one of the most important components of the skin. And you get more squalane and squalene. They're similar. Squalane, S-Q-U-A-L-A-N-E, and squalene, S Q U A. L-E-N-E, -E, you get more of the stuff by exfoliating, by using a washcloth, by using a loofah pad, or by using a sponge in the shower. You get more squalane, more cholesterol, more lipids, more moisture factors, thicker skin, better skin. Exfoliate is the bottom line. You also get more hyaluronic acid. We talked about that a little bit last, uh, last week. We'll also continue talking about hyaluronic acid here in the coming days. Another great exfoliation tool is vitamin A, and it's retinol or retinoic acid form. You can get retinoic acid from a pharmacy, and you can get retinol from my truth treatment pro, uh, from tr tr truthtreatments.com. Here's the thing about retinol. Retinol is unbelievably vital for the skin, retinol being a form of vitamin A. Retinol speeds up the movement of activity of cells as they rise up. 
rise up from uh, the surface of the skin. So strategically applying your retinol in addition to giving your skin vitamin A, in addition to feeding the cells, will also activate the production of connective tissue fibers and improve sloughing. Same way as a washcloth or a loofah pad. You can actually use retinol in addition to being a vitamin for the skin, in addition to nutriating the skin, you can use retinol as an exfoliating tool, but you don't want to overuse your retinol. Just like you don't want to over exfoliate with a sponge or a washcloth, you don't want to overuse retinol. That's, this is why skincare companies are so loath and are so reluctant to put good, high, juicy concentrations of retinol in their skincare products because they're afraid people will overuse. Well, when I created my Truth Treatment Retinol Gel, I took a chance that people will overuse it or people will get irritated. But you know what? If you use retinol correctly and if you use my Truth Treatment Gel correctly, you're going to get tremendous benefits. More hydration, more moisture factors, thicker, stronger skin. And because retinol or vitamin A is anti-pigmentation, you also get skin lightening effects. In addition to the exfoliation that will give you the smoother, softer skin. In fact, I have to say, along with alpha hydroxy acids, using retinol is my favorite way to have the skin exfoliated. You not only get the vitamins, the vitamin effects, the growth effects, the stimulating effects, but you get the smoothness and the softness and the thicker skin and the more moisture factors that you get from the exfoliation effects. Just don't overuse. Like with mechanical, ex, uh, mechanical exfoliation, you're going to upregulate everything. You're going to upregulate the high hyaluronic acid. You get more moisture factors. And you'll get uh, all, the moisturizing, uh, all the moisturizing benefits of upregulating cholesterol and squalane and, the, and hyaluronic acid as well. When you use retinol on a regular basis, your skin will actually be moisturized and hydrated in addition to anti-age. Two caveats about trying to get these kinds of benefits from your retinol. For one thing, you need to have enough retinol to get uh, in your product to get the benefits. Most retinol-containing products will have a speck of retinol. Don't be deluded. Don't be fooled. And if a company isn't telling you how much retinol is in their product, they don't want you to know. If a company is, uh, is hiding their retinol concentration, they don't want you to know how much is in it. And I don't blame them. If you only have 0.01%, and that's really what a lot of, that's the amount of retinol a lot of companies are using, 0.01% or 0.1%, that's 50 to 500 times less than you really need. And most skincare companies are embarrassed, and I don't blame them. That's why I put 5.0% retinol in my Truth Treatment Retinol Gel. Now, 5.0% is absurdly high. No skincare products have that much retinol in them. The most you'll find is 1% or 2%, and that's if you go to a super fancy salon or, or doctor's office. The problem with that much retinol is, for most skincare companies anyway, they're afraid you're going to overuse or you're going to irritate. Well, that's why I put all of the other stuff in my Truth Retinol Gel, and that's why I didn't put the bad stuff in my Truth Retinol Gel, and that's why you won't get the irritation if you use our Truth Retinol Gel even though it does have 5% retinol in it. Just don't overuse it. Don't use it too much. You're not going to necessarily run into any problems, but you'll be wasting your money. You don't, necessarily want, you don't really want to do that. If your skincare company is not truly in, your, in, in the skincare business for you and your skin, there's no way you're going to be using or be getting the kinds of concentrations of the stuff that you really need. All right, there's lots more to say about retinol and exfoliation upregulating hyaluronic acid. I'm, we'll spend time uh, in the next few days talking about hyaluronic acid and its importance as well as its relationship to the whole upregulating and exfoliating. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here. Our number today, 844-236-6010. Got lines open for you. We'll get to your calls here in just a moment. If you're interested in purchasing any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, please call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 or head over to pharmacistben.com or brightsideben.com. You can order products directly off the website. If you're interested, interested in purchasing any truth treatment skin health products, including the retinol gel, 5.0% retinol gel, head to truthtreatments.com. Okay, let's see. FDA strengthens warning that NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, Motrin, Naproxen, etc., increase heart attack and stroke risk. Yes, the very same NSAID drugs that you uh, hear about and, and watch commercials for, Motrin, Advil, Aleve, etc., prescription Celebrex, and uh, these are all prescription types of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, Tylenol and aspirin as well. It turns out that these kinds of drugs increase heart attack and stroke risk, which we've all known, but now the FDA is strengthening their warning. Listen, 
it doesn't matter that it's over the counter. Sometimes we think if the drug is over the counter that it's somehow safer or it's somehow benign or gentle. If a drug works, it is going to have toxic or potentially toxic effects. That's how it works. In the case of these NSAID drugs, heart attacks are likely, stroke risks are possible, I should say possible, not likely, but possible. Strokes are possible, digestive issues and gastrointestinal bleeding are possible. They're just not good things. No drugs are. Do you need them sometimes? Yes, of course you do. I'm not Pollyannish about this. There are times you need pain pills. There's time you need, times you need antibiotics. There's times you need anti-inflammatories. But the problem is, is when we rely on these things and continue our bad living and continue the way our lifestyles that cause the problems and think that the Celebrex or the Advil or the Naproxen or the Aleve or whatever it is is going to somehow counteract the bad living. It doesn't. It shuts down symptomology, period. It shuts down the signs that the body is breaking down, period. How surprising is it to folks, now, probably not you guys listening to this, but how surprising is it to the average person when they hear that drugs don't cure or reverse disease? That's not their role. The implication is you take a drug and you're healthy again. That's not how they work. Do you need to manage your symptoms sometimes? Yes. But the objective of a healthcare professional, be it a doctor, or a pharmacist or anybody who's sworn to help heal the body or help a patient heal the body is not to, mod to control symptomology, it's to figure out what the problem is and eliminate it. Now, of course, the healthcare professional can only do so much and we have to take care of these things ourselves. But the good news is, is that no matter what our health challenges are, they're generic. They're not complicated. I got a letter here, a Facebook, uh, hi Ben, Paul and Monica from the Gold Coast, that's Australia. Met you a few days ago. I was in Australia last week. A friend's son, late teens, has been diagnosed with, check this out, TINU, T-I-N-U, tubulo interstitial nephritis and uveitis syndrome. How dare a medical professional even say that, let alone diagnose somebody with that? Tubulo interstitial nephritis and uveitis syndrome. Of course you're not going to know what the heck to do. What the heck does it even mean? Oh, check this out. Uh, Paul continues, as the disease has only been around since 1975, what? How does a disease only be around since 1975? Did it just kind of fall out of the sky? All of a sudden there's a new disease? Now Paul is smart enough to know a, a scam when he hears one, so he continues, as the disease has only been around since 1975, it smacks of an MD created disease. Yes, Paul, it's exactly what it is. And therefore he will be deficient in some minerals, maybe. Have you come across this before? What are your thoughts, please? Well, here's the deal. Tubulo interstitial nephritis and uveitis syndrome is just the body falling apart. Nephritis is the kidney, uveitis is the eye. Tubulo interstitial means the cells, means the space between the cells in the tube, or the kidney tube. Tubulo interstitial means between the cells in the kidney tube and in the eyes, period. The cells are falling apart. That's the only disease. Remember, all disease is cell disease. Don't be deluded by the hypnotic nonsense in the verbiage and the semantics of diagnostics. Diagnosis doesn't matter. Your diagnosis doesn't matter when it comes to reversing diseases. There's 12,800 different special diagnoses. And the only people who care about your special diagnosis are the specialists, because they get paid for special diagnosis. They don't get paid for making you better. They get paid for special diagnostics. If you really want to get better, you don't have to do much. Number one, you focus on digestive health. This is for Paul and Monica, if you're listening, or anybody out there who's dealing with a health crisis or a health challenge. You focus on digestive health and wellness. That means you figure out what's getting into the system, into the blood, that is, through the digestive system, and you eliminate it. And that requires a food diary. It requires paying attention to your digestive symptoms. Simultaneously, you patch up the gut. Now, I know that this is tubulo interstitial nephritis and uveitis. It's the eyes and it's the kidneys. But you still patch up the gut in order to keep stuff from getting into the blood. The kidneys filter the blood. So if the kidneys, if you got a problem with the kidneys, you got a blood problem. If you have a blood problem, your chances are very good you got a digestive problem because that's the main way things get into the blood. Then you stabilize the blood sugar because sugar represents a toxin to the blood. And sugar represents a toxin to the kidneys. It's no accident that kidney disease and diabetes go hand in hand. So you stabilize the sugar, stabilize the blood, uh, the, you work on the digestive system, you strengthen the digestive lining, eliminate problem foods, and stabilize the blood sugar by using the sweeties, by using magnesium, by using the B-complex and the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, and restricting your intake of fast-burning sugars, bread, pasta, potatoes, desserts, etc. And then you calm the body down. 
That means deep breathing, eliminating problem foods and stabilizing the sugar. That will calm the body down. Uh, mental and emotional techniques to calm the body down. Hot tubs, massages, Reiki, deep breathing. All of these are ways that you calm the body down. And that's it. Do you need a doctor for any of this stuff? Of course, you get, make sure you get on a good nutritional supplement program because that has a calming effect on the body as well. Do we need a doctor for any of this? Do we need the medical model for any of this? Do we need a doctor to, to, for our digestive issues to go on a food, to do a food diary or to eliminate problem foods or to do a fast once in a while? Do we need a doctor to stabilize our blood sugar, to eliminate sugar from the diet, to, to, use, to uh, use nutritional supplements to help protect against excessive sugaring of the of the blood vessels and of the, of the kidney and the various organs in the body? Do we need a doctor to calm the body down, to do deep breathing, to take a hot shower? When was the last time you got a prescription for a hot shower, or a hot tub, or Reiki, or deep breathing? These are not medical issues, and medical is not health. Medicine does not equal health. Obamacare is about medicine. It's not about health. Doctoring is about medicine. It's not about health. The conflation, the combination of health with medicine does not serve us. It only serves those who would sell us medical strategies. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm pharmacist Ben. Let's go to Carlos in Texas. Good morning, and welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning, Ben. Um, over the last few years, I've been dealing with uh, atrial fibrillation okay. um, to the point that uh, it has gotten worse after a couple of cardioversions. Are you on a blood thinner? Did they give you a blood thinner? Blood thinner? Yeah, Eliquis. Uh, okay. Absolutely. Yeah, they got me on okay. that. And uh, what they were, the cardiologist is recommending now, uh, which he's recommended uh, previously, is to they have a pacemaker installed. Yeah. Um, and so I'm looking at either continuing with uh, the AFib, uh, with the sweat, shaking, tiredness. Well, all I that mean, sucks. All, that's, yeah. all that sucks. But here's the thing, Carlos. AFib is super easy to deal with. I mean super easy. And by the way, when you say cardioversion, was it electrical or are you talking about the, the medication? The electrical. You did an electrical cardioversion. Okay. Hang yeah, on, uh, Carlos. We've got to take a break. We'll, we'll talk about this when we come back. It's super easy. Super duper easy. And when I explain it all, it'll make sense. Hang tight. Don't go away, Carlos. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Got a couple lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. You can purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program at brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. And if you want to join the Bright Side Ben team and help spread the word about how important a good nutritional supplement program can be and make some money at the same time, you can sign up right off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for more information. Okay, we're in Texas talking to Carlos about atrial fibrillation. They want to put a pacemaker in Carlos's heart. And uh, Carlos, you there, buddy? Yes, I am. You had, some, you had an electrical cardioversion. How did that work out for you? Uh, I've had three. Uh, oh, you got three. That worked out great then. Totally cured your problem, right? No, the, each one each one got shorter. Uh, in, <laughs> each one made matters rate. worse? Are you kidding me? Uh, yeah, and then I had an ablation. Oh, an ablation. Yeah. That's even better. That's when they cauterize the heart. For the listeners, a, a, a cardioversion, there's different ways you can cardi use a card. You can have chemical cardioversion or electrical cardioversion. They basically shoot electricity into the heart. Uh, an ablation is when they destroy the heart. <laughs> I'm telling you, what, you know, a thou, uh, in a hundred years, they're going to look back at the medical model and they're going to think that we were barbarians, which we are if we do this kind of stuff. Anyway, uh, atrial fibrillation is a freaked out heart, Carlos. It's a heart that is just, st it's, it's just terrified. It's like a baby in distress. And so, of course, if your baby's in distress, you can shoot electricity at it and then the baby's out of distress. I'm kidding. You can cut the baby's tongue out and then the baby stops crying. I'm kidding. You can poison the baby with chloroform and then, it, then you won't know that he's in distress anymore. I'm kidding. But that's what the medical model does. It poisons our baby. It cuts our baby's tongue out. It electrocutes our baby to shut it up, to, to, to force it to comply. 
This is how medicine works. And this is why I'm going to go to the end of my day s- screaming from the rooftop, this is not fair. This is not fair to human beings for the medical model to do this. I'm not re- blaming any physicians, any individuals. It's the paradigm. And it's the model. So you've got a freaked out heart. Carlos, you got a heart that's having a seizure. And by the way, seizures and AFib go hand in hand. They go together. Just Google seizures and epileptic seizures and atrial fibrillation, and you'll see. So you got a heart that is just freaked out. So we got to calm the heart down. That means calm the body down. First thing you can do is you can just practice deep breathing techniques, and that will slow the heart down. That, or, or that will calm the heart down, I should say. Just practicing your slow, deep breathing. Low blood oxygen and seizures and fibrillation, I should say, go hand in hand. Like diabetes and blood sugar problems and fibrillation go hand in hand. Like epileptic seizures and fibrillation go hand in hand. So number one, calm the body down. Hot tubs, massages, hot showers, deep breathing. Anything you can do, yoga, meditation, anything you can do to calm the body down is the first step. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Okay, that's the first thing you're going to do. Calm the body down. And not, don't wait until you fibrillate before you do it. Do it on a regular basis, three times a day. Sit on the couch and practice slow, deep breathing. Get an app. On, if you have a smartphone, an Android, or an iPhone, get an app, application, an app called My Calm Beat. Or you can get another one called Bio Breathing. I have them both on my phone. I use them both. And they walk you through the breathing process, the deep breathing process. Do it two or three. You should probably do it even more. But at least two or three minutes, two or three times a day. That will have a huge benefit for you. The second thing you want to do is keep your blood sugar stable. When you're hypo, that's low blood sugar, hypoglycemic, or hyper, high blood sugar, hyperglycemic, you're going to be at more risk, you're going to be at greater risk for fibrillation. So keeping your blood sugar stable is extremely important. If you're uh, diabetic or pre-diabetic, and the chances are pretty good that you are, you're going to want to fast, but you're going to want to control your blood sugar for a couple of weeks before you go into a fast, because you don't want to go into low blood sugar, because like I say, that'll trigger fibrillation. But you Using more protein, coconut oil, uh, salt, the sweeties, the chromium vanadium, the beyond tangy tangerine, restricting your intake of potatoes and pasta and rice and desserts and soda pop and candy and cake is very important. If you have a problem with those kinds of food and you you can't stop eating them, more protein, especially an amino acid called glutamine. G-L-U-T-A-M-I-N-E, which is wonderful for weaning yourself off of sugar. Maybe a, a teaspoon of glutamine powder in water once a day, or half a teaspoon twice a day. You could, there's no real toxicity with glutamine powder. And then the third step, and maybe the most important, is stabilize the digestive system. Is protect your digestive system, protect the blood from the entry of toxins in through the digestive system. Fasting will help. Caloric restriction will help. Do a food diary. Notice when the fibrillate, notice what foods are related to making the fibrillation worse. Notice what foods give you digestive health problems, heartburn, diarrhea, constipation, etc. And then eliminate those foods. I guarantee you, I'm not a psychic, Carlos, but I guarantee you, you've got some digestive problems. You can't have AFib without them. You follow me? I got you. Okay. So do a food diary and then eliminate the problem foods, and then use all the digestive support strategies you can think of, including especially probiotics and good bacteria. Also, you can use fermented foods and fiber. Vegetable fiber can also be helpful, and that will also help you wean off of sugar. If you don't have a Vitamix or a Nutribullet, get one and make celery juice and uh, cabbage juice and spinach juice. Go get sprouts and throw those in as well. Do any kind of vegetable juices you can think of as long as they don't bother your digestive system. The fiber from the celery and the vegetables will help with the probiotics, the good bacteria. They'll feed the good bacteria. Uh, the glutamine powder will help you wean, that will help you wean off sugar is also very good for the digestive system. And then uh, you can use the Fucoid Z or the Z-radical, actually the Fucoid Z is probably a little better, to coat and soothe the digestive system. And you want to be living on bone soup. As, you know, that should be your main source of protein and your main source of calories, bone soup, where you take a chicken and you turn it into soup. I call it bone soup. It's really chicken soup. It's liquid protein as well as the cartilage factors that come off of the, uh, the glucosamine and the hyaluronic acid and the other uh, cartilage factors that come off that white part of the chicken, the knobby part on the chicken bone, has wonderful effects for the digestive system, for the immune system, and will also help calm down the, um, the fibrillation by stabilizing the blood sugar. 
Right? You got tons of strategies there. None involve a medical professional or a pharmacist or insurance. And don't forget about the Healthy Star Pack just to get your basic Mighty 90 essential nutrients. All right? Does that help you, my man? Yes, it does. Okay. On the Eloquist, you recommend that? Uh, you know, it's a nasty drug, but once you're on a drug, it's between you and your doctor. Uh, if the doctor's treating you, Carlos, it's not in my place to, to modify or correct his treatment. You want to work with your doctor. It is a nasty drug. No, it's a, to force the blood to thin is inherently problematic because the blood doesn't want to thin. It doesn't want to be forced. The blood is the sacred space. It's the holy of holies. And there is, there is a, a, a significant price to pay for compelling it to thin or compelling the blood vessels to open or compelling the blood in any way to do the doctor's bidding. There's always going to be a price to pay. And while Eliquis is certainly not as toxic as Warfarin or Coumadin, it's still a problem. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Thank man. you, my man. Appreciate All right, you. take care. God bless. I hope everything works out for you. Steve in Virginia, welcome back to the Bright Side. We've got about a minute and a half. What's going on, my man? Oh, hello there. Thank you. We just were uh, recently, we heard this uh, natural uh, doctor. She was on another show, and she was saying, it seemed like, I think she was, <laughs> she said what she ate in a day, and I don't know, it seemed like a little too much on the on the carbs, but, but she um, had a lot of good stuff, but she said she didn't agree with eating any oil at all and any cheeses, and uh, I just well, wanted to you're going to have to, you want that. my take on that? Yeah. Well, you know, oil's a problem. It's definitely a problem. Human beings aren't meant to eat processed oils. However, there's lots of great things in an oil, and so you got to make your own decision on that. The free radicals are there's po a possibility for for free radicals as the oils as, as the oils chronologically progress through time. You can have issues with with the formation of free radicals and a lot of and in the processing of the oils from the seeds if they're seed oils or the grains or wherever they're getting the oils from. You can create free radicals and some nutritionists believe that you shouldn't have oils. In my personal opinion, and I've been working with um, with skin, in the skincare business for many years. In my personal opinion, I've seen too many benefits. Uh, from using oils, and so I can't, I can't get aboard that train. Now, you do have to be careful with them, and you do want to try to stick to coconut oil and butter, but nutritional oils, I've seen just too many benefits from folks, skin benefits especially, also uh, menstrual cycle benefits for women from uh, supplementing with oils or making sure you get enough oils. Also, once you start using oils preventatively or ahead of time, you're not going to crave the fatty foods that we all crave. It's very difficult to wean yourself or to get off of fat because fat is such an important source of nutrition. So you're going to have to make your own decision on that. Personally, I use oils, but I'm just very careful about cooking with them and always make sure that they're cold pressed and fresh and kept in the refrigerator. That being said, butter and coconut oil are the most stable of oils and coconut oil has got some specific benefits for the heart and the brain. All right, Steve, thanks for your call. Appreciate it. And that's all the time we have for today. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening, friends. Check out my website, PharmacistBen.com, and my blog, BrightSideBen.com and CriticalHealthNews.com. And if you're interested in purchasing a retinol gel or any of the Truth Treatment products, head to TruthTreatments.com. We'll talk to you all later. Have a wonderful, spectacular, beautiful day. Bye for now.